part of Hyperion 8 is was a full set of sensors. And what we learned at the show was that the LiDAR sensor of choice, the only uh, LiDAR that showed up on the slide was from a, a company called Luminar. And their stock price just absolutely uh, took off. I think it went up 20% uh, based uh, on, on that announcement. And I thought it was a good, um, that it was a good way uh, for Luminar to show off their wares in that they're part of, you know, I, I guess arguably one of the most sophisticated driving platforms out there. The other, the other thing is I think it put the, you don't need uh, LiDAR uh, to bed. Okay. You know, there's a lot of theories out there and even Elon Musk thinks he doesn't need uh, LiDAR, but he's three years late uh, in getting out um, uh, his fully autonomous uh, software stack. So uh, Luminar also had earnings uh, that they announced yesterday. And I think the highlight there, in addition to um, it, it's further productization of all its stacks out there was an 89% uh, increase in revenue. And, you know, for a growing startup uh, like this, a public startup, I think that's, uh, I think it was a pretty awesome feat. Yeah, so we've kind of just pivoted from topic uh, two to three, uh, which was Luminar. And Pat, yeah, you pointed out the growth. You know, you and I had the chance uh, during F1 to actually meet with Austin Russell, and I've had a chance at IAA over in Germany. And I continue to be impressed by this company. It's a, you know, revenue wise, it's still very early days, uh, but the company has increasingly been selected to really take the LIDAR and long range LIDAR into the next generation. Uh, the, as we move from L2 plus, which is a lot of what we still end up talking about to L4, uh, long range LIDAR is going to be a critical element and component. Traditional sensors and vision cannot uh, accomplish the same thing. And I had the chance when I was at IA in Germany to actually witness this hands on seeing, you know, a child running out from a truck and that the LIDAR was able to identify and stop a vehicle where a traditional L2 plus driver assistant technology is not capable of, of doing so. Um, so, you know, this particular win here, look, you know, on time, not on time, that's a discussion we can have with whether or not NVIDIA is getting there. But everybody's goal is to get to L4, is to get to fully autonomous, safe, fully autonomous driver in and out of the loop to be able to enable next generation of smart cities, uh, you know, connected, uh, connected environments. And so NVIDIA is putting a real timestamp on it, though. So to their credit, they're saying in 2024, they're going to be able to provide the technology to OEMs that is going to enable fully autonomous vehicles to be commercially sold on the road. Uh, speaking of on the road, Pat, that's, uh, that's the name of our, uh, you know, when we take our podcast to our client events, in case anybody is looking for, uh, you know, that. Anyway, um, but, you know, for Luminar, it's a great validation. You're talking about a company like uh, like like NVIDIA that's been paramount to the development of Tesla software and that has worked very closely with Tesla uh, over the years. You're looking at a company that has design wins for a vast majority of major OEMs and a company that's expected to be playing a very significant role. Uh, Luminar's won companies like Volvo. Uh, they've won companies like Polaris, which has an upcoming de for their vehicle business, which is super interesting. And, uh, you know, Austin Russell is a, a, a really compelling, really passionate guy. So uh, I'm interested in seeing how this comes out to the next level, but it's never a bad thing as you're a rising company to be endorsed and put in as the primary design win or a, um, you know, in a, in a, in a new uh, product like Luminar was by NVIDIA. 